Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am doing a three looks using one palette. The palette that I'm using today is the Odin's Eye Cosmetics Alva Eyeshadow Palette. And you guys, it is so pretty. So if you would like to see the three looks that I created, then just keep watching. So the last few weeks I've been playing around a lot with Odin's Eye Cosmetics and a lot of you guys have been very curious about the brand and asking me to bring you some content on my channel about their products and Odin's Eye actually saw that I was using and loving their products and they reached out about doing a collaboration. So all of the Odin's Eye products featured in this video were sent to me and I'm very excited to be working with them on this video. So quickly I want to talk about this eyeshadow palette that I have in my hands here. If you don't know Odin's Eye Cosmetics, Cosmetics, they are a Swedish brand and their brand creates very very ethereal style palettes very well thought out I am so impressed everything from the packaging to the quality of the product is done very well so this is the Alva eyeshadow palette this is the palette I will be using today they have a couple other eyeshadow palettes in their line but I believe this is their newest one it is $30 and you get 16 shadows the packaging first of all so beautiful it has a fairy theme to it when you open it up, it does have a mirror and then you have your 16 shades. What I really like about the color story of this is that it's colorful but wearable. So you have options to create a more neutral wearable look that I'm wearing today, but you also have options to play around and create brighter, more colorful looks. In my opinion, it's the perfect colorful palette for a neutral wearer because it will encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone without feeling too uncomfortable wearing these colors. So I hope that the tutorials I bring to today are sh kind of showing you how you can create simple wearable looks while also playing with some color as well. So this palette has a lot to offer and I am in love with the color story. It's a palette that I feel I can wear every day without feeling uncomfortable. I will say this is a bit of a softer palette meaning you aren't going to get a lot of depth with this palette. It's about the true colors that are in here that just create a really soft ethereal look and their shimmers. Oh my gosh you guys they have a lot of different shimmer formulas in here that each create very different dimensions mentioned to the eyes. Some have a little bit more pigment to them, some are more lid toppers, some have more glitter in them, some have some duochrome to them. I'm very impressed by their shimmer formula and you will see how they work in the video. If you like glam, shimmery, metallic, foiled, glittery kind of shadows, I definitely would recommend looking into this palette. They also were kind enough to provide me with a discount code for you guys. So if you are interested in purchasing anything from their collection, if you use the code Morgan Turner, you get 10% off. Now, disclaimer, I do make a small commission out of that, so use it if you would like. Don't feel pressured to, but you do get 10% off. Let's get into a deeper dive of it and move on to the tutorials. All right, guys, so for look number one, as you can see, we have this gorgeous, light, lilac-y, glittery eye. I'm obsessed. So here is how we do it. My eye is already prepped with Kaleidos Tone Activator. With a MAC 224, we're gonna take this light peachy shade called Jasmine. We are going to put a light layer of this all over the crease, take this color pretty high. This is a very nice soft peachy color that's going to peek through underneath the colors that we are about to put on next. With a Kaleidos S2, we are taking Lotus, which is this mauve purple shade. So this is going to be the next shade down to introduce more of a purple element. It's going to tie our lid colors together as well. And for a more blown out look, I'm actually taking the same brush and applying it along my lower lash line. So it's going to create more of a smoky effect. Just a really soft look to the eye right now. Taking a refer 14 brush, we're using Peony, which is the darkest shade in the palette. As per usual, you're going to take this darkest shade and you're going to start off by patting it in the outer corner. We really want some depth here and slowly kind of rainbow it in towards the inner part of the eye. We're going to use a lot of this color and what I'm impressed by, as you can see, it doesn't stick to the area. It just goes wherever your brush goes. So it's very very easy to get a blown out look with this one. I'm also going to take the same color and apply it just to the outer third of the lower lash line. I want to leave a lot of room for shimmer over here, but again, just for that definition to make the look pop. 
Now it's time for the magic. We're gonna start going into the shimmer shades. My suggestion would be to use a glitter glue with these shimmer shades because a lot of them are lid toppery. However, if you add a glitter glue underneath, you're going to get more opacity from the shades. I am going to apply the shades dry today for this look just so you can see how they look. And as you can see, they still look amazing, but under normal circumstances, I think I would use a glitter glue. The first shimmer shade we're going to go into is Dahlia. So this is going to be our center of the lid color. This one has a little bit more pinky mauve to it compared to the next color that we're going to add. So you see how this can work as just a lid topper, which is really pretty, but you can build it up as I'm doing to work more of a singular lid color, but I like how you have the option to build it up and it builds up pretty easily as well. So I just popped that into the center of the lid. Now we're going, of course, into one of my favorite shades in the whole palette, which is Lilac. So this is the lightest shade. It's a bit more blue purpley compared to the color we just used. And as you can see, you can tell it's a good shadow because they look different from each other. A lot of times with lower quality palettes, you'll find that they just kind of look the same. So I'm starting off by using my finger to pack this in. I'm gonna take a little bit more press it more into the center to bring some light. Now I'm taking a rougher number three brush, any kind of pencil pointy brush that you have. I'm going to really work some strength of that color towards the top. So you see how that brightened everything up. Also going to put it along the lower lash line, just along the front half. My brush is not wet, nor is there glitter glue. So this is just super shiny and building with a brush very nicely. Also going to pack that color onto the inner corner. For a little bit more dimension to the eye, we're taking golden tulipa. This is going to add a fun gold element also, but all I'm doing is I'm just popping that right on top of the lilac and just a touch under here. Really quickly, I'm gonna do it liner and lashes and we'll be back for blush and lips. All right, you guys, so here is the final look for look number one. I also went in with the Alba Fruit Blusher in the shade Sweet Peach from Odin's Eye and then one of their matte lip stains in the shade Purple Plum. I thought a deeper lip would play really fun with the eyes. Love it, I have very sparkly, ethereal, light eyes, big lashes, deeper lips. I'm loving this look, let me know what you guys think of look number one it is time to move on to look number two all right so look number two you guys i'm really excited about this one it is such a fun look for summer playing with a little bit more color here starting off with a luxie 229 i'm going into daisy yellows tell a lot about a brand and the quality of a shadow and i have to say i'm very impressed with how this yellow is working for me as you can see it's quite bright if you want it to be even more dramatic and really bright yellow put a light Light or a near white base on underneath. I didn't want anything too obnoxiously yellow, but you can get it quite yellow without even having to do that. And it's staying pretty well and you can really pack it on for some more opacity. I'm very, very impressed with how this yellow is. I'm going to apply that to the inner half of the lower lash line as well. And that's it. This yellow worked out really well. I'm very impressed. With a Morphe M507, I'm going in with Camellia. So this in pan looks like a bit of a deeper shade, but when you kind of blend it out, it becomes a bit lighter. So it does hold on to pigmentation, as you can see on initial application. But you will find, though, that you do need to pack it back on if you really want the opacity that you see in the pan. But as you can see, it's acting really nice for me right now. And then I'm also going to apply it down here and just to work out the edges I have a clean blending brush and I'm just using that to work everything out and then also work on making these two colors a little bit more seamless together so it should be turning into almost like a muted orange shade for a little bit of depth in the eye I'm going in with morning glory right here I'm using this same brush and I'm just applying that right in the edge of the eye right here just a little bit I'm not even going 
going out too far with that and I'm doing the same thing on the outer part of the lower lash line. So just keeping this out here. You guys see this blend and how easy it was to do? Now it's time for the scary part. I'm using my Kaleidos Tone Activator, which is what I use as my base as well. And I'm going to create a cut crease. Now I'm not doing a harsh look for this cut crease. As you can see, you can kind of see it, but it's nothing too crazy just to kind of add a little bit more oomph to the look. So if I wanted the look on the cut crease to be much more visible, I would have used like a white base. But since I just want it to kind of be a little bit more subtle, this is like a skin tone base like this is completely fine. Taking a small brush, I'm going into Sunflower, which is the shimmer yellow. In the last tutorial, I said some of the shimmers would benefit from like a glitter glue or being used wet. That is not the case with this particular shade. It is so creamy and pigmented. As you can see, I'm using this dry. Now it is sticking onto that base, so it does have a little bit more grab than normal application, but still, this shimmer shade is really nice. So I'm just applying that to the first half of the cut crease. With an Isam W21, we're going into Cherry Blossom. So this is a shade that is a little bit more chunky is the wrong word because that has a negative connotation, but it's one of those formulas that would benefit from being used wet or with glitter glue. But I mean, I'm not really using that and it still is fine. But again, if you want the true glitter reflectiveness, definitely use a glitter glue underneath for this. But even with that, I'm impressed. We're gonna blend the two middle parts together to give it as smooth of a transition as possible. I'm taking a little bit more of Morning Glory, which is the deep defining shade that we use, and I'm just gonna use that to kind of seamlessly blend it into the crease colors. And so that is it for the shadow. I am so in love with this for the summer. So I'm going to finish the rest of my face and I'll be back to show you the final. All right, you guys. So I went with everything else kind of natural because I really wanted the eyeshadow to show. I didn't want to cover any of the work that we had, so I just went in with a very thin lash, and that is it. So here is the final look for look number two. Absolutely perfect for summer. If you're curious about anything else I'm wearing, of course, it is in the description box. And let's move on to the last and final look. All right, you guys, it is time for the last and final look. I wanted to show you that even though this is a colorful palette, it also is very neutral at the same time. So I wanted to do a glittery neutral eye for you guys. It's super simple and I love this look so much. With the Kaleidos S2, we are going to take Jasmine. This is going to be our transition color. So I'm going to put this basically everywhere just to start off the definition with the look. So I'm even going to use the same fluffy brush and I'm just going to line that along the lower lash line as well just to create very very subtle definition in the eye. With the Luxie 229 we are taking Daisy. I put just the tiniest amount of Daisy on my brush just to add a little bit more yellowy warmness to this look. It's not really doing anything other than changing the tone just a bit. Next step, very important, I'm going to use glitter glue. You don't need to, but because I want every single glitter of the eyeshadow to stick and I want every bit of definition that I can get, I do want something that the shadow can stick onto. And this shadow looks really beautiful without putting anything on your lid, but putting down a little bit of glitter glue is really gonna give you something that you can't get without adding it. So I'm putting it a little bit higher above my crease as well just putting down a thin layer. With my finger, we are going into Coffee Bean. Guys, I love this shade so much. Don't be intimidated about it. It's a little bit lighter than it looks in the pan and it is gorgeous as a one and done kind of shadow. You really don't even need to put a crease color down or a transition color like I did if you don't want to because look how stunning this is all on its own. I know it's looking a little bit crazy and as you can see, like I said, I'm bringing 
bring that color just a little bit above the crease. Don't be alarmed. I'm gonna take that Luxie 229 brush and we're going to blend this out. So this is almost like a defining crease shade as well as the all over lid shade. It might take a little bit of extra blending depending on where you ended your glue. So it's a little bit harder to blend out where the glue stops. So just put in that little bit of extra work. And because you put the glue down, you're less likely to have glitter fallout as well. Now that the edges are blended out, we're going in for round two of this shade. I'm also going to take that shade on a small brush and I'm going to trace that along the lower lash line just so that we can get definition around the whole eye. On my finger, I'm going to take a little bit of Cosmos right here. So the glitter on this is a little bit more bright and golden. So I'm just applying that right to the center of the lid. So when the light hits, it'll add just a touch more dimension to the eyelid, but I just added a touch. Like I said, you don't need much. With a refer number 12 brush, we're going into a golden tulipa, and this is going to finish off the shadow for today's tutorial. I'm just using this as the inner corner color. I'm just below the brow bone. So here's this really simple glittery neutral golden eyeshadow look. It's incredible. I'm going to finish the rest of my face, and I will be back to show you the final look. All right, guys. So here is the final look. I do want to show you some other products that I paired with the palette. So I use the blush shade in Water Lily, just a very light wash. And then I use the highlighter palette that they have and I mixed these two colors and as you can see it's very very glowy i really like it and then on my lips i'm wearing their matte lip stain in the shade sweet peach i actually blurred it out this time and it looks super good i really enjoy it so that is what i used for this entire look i just think this is such a pretty glam look without being too dramatic and i love the finish of their shimmer shades it's so stunning again thank you so much odin's eye for collaborating with me on this video if you guys are curious about more products in their brand next week i will actually be doing a whole brand overview so you can see the colors and more of the products that the brand has to offer that is all i have for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i hope you would consider taking the time to do so and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one